I like to make a lot of tools on this channel, but this is probably the most complicated tool that I've made to date. This is for checking the pinion depth on the Porsche 356 741 transaxle. I think it'll also work on the 915 transaxle, which is in Mac. So this is gonna be something I'm gonna use multiple times, and it's really important for a quiet running transmission and a long lasting transmission. Garage time. Measuring the pinion depth before we just tear apart the transaxle is a wise thing to do, and this tool will let me do it. The starting point for this tool is a spare differential housing that I had left over from the 914. I'm just doing some machining to it to make it suitable for the 741. Now I'm set up on the lathe so I can cut off the crown wheel flange. Here I'm just honing down the surface that the bearing slips over so I can get this tool in and out very easily. Then I use the mill to touch off with the dial indicator on the highest point of the bearing surface. And then I moved the mill and measured the height of the flat milled portion that I put in and then use the digital readout on the mill to establish really the height of that milled surface from the center line of the differential carrier. Yeah, I'm back at home now and I'm working on this bushing. This is a Delron bushing that I machined at the workshop. It goes in a hole just like that, but on this side that's been milled flat. And what that's for is this dial indicator is gonna go from the inside and that is gonna fit right there, but I want it to be a precise fit so this is a, a 3 8 diameter shoulder here. And so I want to, you gotta zero this. Yeah, 372, 373. So I'm going to ream this to be a nice fit. So I don't wanna just drill it. I'm gonna ream it first and try to get that to slip right in. So I have the reamer set. This is a tapered reamer, adjustable reamer. So I have it set to, looks like 375. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. Oh, it fits really nice. The real challenge is gonna to be to get it to fit inside here. Plunger is just barely interfering. I got a hold of the back of it here, so I'm, I'm got the plunger all the way extended and it's just barely too tight to go in there. I've already removed the cap off the back, but I can remove the tip. And I think that'll help. There we go. The gauge is now in there secure. I can wiggle it around. What I ended up doing is employing a spring here that really puts pressure on the dial indicator. Just keeps it snug up against this Delrin bushing here. It's like three and a half digits accurate for things in inches, and I can switch it to millimeters too, which might come in handy. Now everything is assembled and machined, it's ready to go, but I need to calibrate the location of this pointer relative to this machined surface, and I, I precision ground that surface with the flat honing stone and stuff. So what I've done, is I've taken some careful measurements of these two outer diameters that support the bearing. And I've divided by two, I've established that the center line of this carrier and this machine surface is a known amount. It's actually um, 2.8065. That's the location of the axis to here. 
And I did that using the, the digital readout on the mill. And I, I probed along here, found the top of this diameter. I went up and I touched down on this and I made sure it was flat. So I made sure that as I dragged the indicator across both X and Y, everything was within a thousandth of an inch. So I'm highly confident on that 2.8065 number. It just so happens to be exactly 53 millimeters. And I didn't plan that, but I just got lucky based on how deep I machined right here. So that's 53. Now the pinion depth is a nominal 59.8. So this extra, there's a difference between 59.8 and 53. That's what the dial indicator is going to do. So I need to establish 59.8 from the center line of the carrier to this probe. So to do that, I'm going to use some precision pins to make up that difference. So I'll do this in inches because all my, my, um, my measurement tools are in inches, but I'm going to convert back to millimeters when it comes time. This indicator will measure, because it's digital, it'll measure either in millimeters or inches. I'll pick the appropriate pin gauge to lay on top of here. I'll use two of them and I'll put a straight edge across the top and that'll tell me exactly where 59.8 is and it's repeatable every time. After a bunch of math, I've determined that I need a um, height of 0.2678. So what I have is I have a 268 and 267 pin and I'm going to place them, you know, on either side. Just hit zero on the indicator. And so that now, that indicator is nominal 59.8. So as I go up in, in distance, it'll count up. So I pivot it up. That's a larger number. And then that's a smaller number. So the nice thing about the digital gauge is you can toggle whether it counts up or down. And no matter where I put these gauges, I'm getting the same 59 point, I'm getting the same zero reading. So this isn't fluctuating at all. Which means the surface that I milled here is, is parallel and everything here is good. The other thing is I have this piece of aluminum. I actually used it when I was spinning this on the lathe. The other side has a hole in it, but I've inserted it from this direction because now I can use this as a handle when it's time to rotate this. So this is going to make contact with the pinion gear and we're going to have to rotate it until it gets to the, uh, the maximum number or actually to the minimum number. This is the piece that I machined to connect the live center onto the housing when I was turning it, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and glue this in so it sticks out this way. And then I'm gonna attach a knob on the end too so I can physically turn the carrier from outside the transmission. And I'm getting ready to drop this in. Take my first measurement. And because I honed this bearing surface down a little bit, it should slip in so the bearing's a little easier. So there's that knob. And then inside here, that is the indicator. See how it's pointing right at the pinion? Of course, I haven't put the pinion in yet, but it's going to sweep across the face of the pinion and get its minimum reading. I've just repositioned the indicator so it's a little bit easier to read it through this hole here. So I'm going to drop it back in. So the indicator is pretty easy to read from here. So I'm getting ready to put the gear cluster back in the housing. And so this is what the end of the pinion gear looks like. This surface is precision ground flat, but we got to take the measurement right off center of this hole. That's part of the machining process hole or whatever. And then this has some markings on it that tell us 
what the optimum position of the pinion is for my matched ring gear. This is the matching number. This one says it should be um, plus 0.13 over the nominal dimensions. I'm going to take the carrier out one more time because what's happening is that plunger is too long and it's not able to get on top of the pinion gear. It's just running into the side of it. Here's a view of that main shaft and then this is the pinion shaft. And I don't have the intermediate plate torqued down yet. So its position is not actually where it needs to be. I just want to make sure the dial indicator can get on top of that surface right there. I just cut this little tubing with a slit in the back. So I'm going to slide it over the back side of the plunger and that's going to limit the travel. See that plastic tubing on the back and that just keeps it moving just that much. And the indicator has just got just enough travel. There it is with the retainer spring and washer kind of holding it all together. I tried not to disturb the original gasket here because that does impact the position of the pinion. This is set for 20 foot pounds, which is kind of a generic torque. So we'll go around these slowly. And then I'm not sure you can see the numbers there, but it goes negative and the most negative number, which is the, which is when it's perpendicular to the pinion is minus four, four, two, minus four, one, minus four, two. So as it swings right into the pinion, you get the smallest number and that's the one we're after. I get minus 0.42. Now I can, over here I can move the gear. I can move the, the pinion by, by doing this. So I'm going to move the pinion a few times and just repeat that measurement. So even though I moved the gear, I'm still getting, this time I'm getting minus 0.41. And that means that the pinion gear is a little bit further in than nominal. So my preliminary measurement based on all the calibration that I've done is 59.39 millimeters. That is the position of the end of the pinion gear to the center line of the differential carrier or the center line of the crown wheel. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing because every manual and the way they mark the gears is slightly different. So my pinion gear has a plus one three on it. So the, the, the thought would be that 59.8, you know, plus 0.13 means it would be, the way the diagram shows, it should be 0.13 closer to the crown wheel. And that means that, um, you know, my, my pinion gear is closer to the crown wheel, but the numbers don't actually match. And then if you look at the factory tool, they have a calibration procedure, which is a little different than mine. They calibrate it at 59 millimeters uh, instead of 59.8. But the nominal dimension apparently is 59.8. So I don't know why they calibrate at 59 other than just to round the numbers even. But if you, if you reference 59 and the, and the plus 13 means it's 13, um, uh, you know, 0.13 millimeters closer, then that gets me a little bit closer to, to what I have, but it's just not exact. So 
I, I need to do a little bit more research. I'm pretty confident in the measurement tool. It's just trying to make sense of the Porsche markings because they changed it from the earlier stuff. The earlier stuff actually put the number right on there, like 59.30. That's the number it needs to be. But they started leaving the 59 off, and I don't know if it's referencing you know, 59 or 59.8. So basically, I'm, I'm confused, but I'm confident in the way the tool works. The only thing I could do a little bit better on the tool would be to preload the carrier in these bearings because the ball bearings have some play in the radial direction. And when you preload them, it takes a lot of that play out. So it makes the bearings more concentric. So I can influence the result a tiny bit if I shift you know, my, my uh, carrier left, right. I have it in this vertical orientation, so it's kind of in the middle, but I need to order some more or make some more spacers to adapt this 914 carrier to actually take up the full width of the 741 housing because the 914 carrier is a little bit narrower. So I would have to use several stacks of shims, which I don't have enough, but I might make something that will indeed preload the bearings so we can get a more accurate measurement. And this gasket here, uh, when I separated it, you know, it was glued. So when I separated it, it, it kind of tore a little bit. It's a very thin gasket, but it is the factory gasket. That also influences the measurement. So I feel, feel like I'm making progress. I'm definitely going slow. Want to understand every single thing and be 100% certain on this measurement. So if you have some ideas about how to interpret the markings, and how to interpret the manuals, um, that would be uh, much appreciated because I, uh, I need to do my own research. But if you have a heads up on that, please leave a comment below or contact me uh, via email. That would be awesome. And we'll just keep going on this. After we get the, uh, the measurements dialed in, I so far I have a backlash measurement taken off the end here. And I also have now a preliminary um, pinion depth. And, I, and then next step would be to measure the, uh, the preload in this direction. And to do that, I would need my original carrier from the car back in here. So I might do that later. Anyways, thanks again for watching. I think this was a fun one. See you next week.